Welcome to the channel, I'm Jay Malone. Today I'm gonna to show you how I use Photoshop to make YouTube thumbnails like this. Let's get started. Today I'm taking a break from the normal tech unboxing because I get this question often, how do you make your YouTube thumbnails? So I decided to show you how. The way that I'm gonna show you today is with Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, I would recommend getting it. It's $9.99 a month and you get Lightroom and Photoshop. If you don't wanna do that at all, then use something maybe like Canva, uh, which is something that you can use online for free. You just don't have all the options that I'm gonna show you today. So let's head on over to Photoshop. I am starting with a 1920 by 1080 blank canvas. But before we get into that, let's open up Bridge and let's find a photo to work with. You'll see if you look here, I have done just a photo shoot, different expressions, different looks. I highly recommend doing something like this. But I'm going to go with this picture of me holding the camera. I'm going to double click the image and open it in Photoshop. Once it's open in Photoshop, we really need to grab the marquee tool. I recommend just selecting the area that you want to keep and going to image and crop. Once you have cropped this image, then go over to your selection tool. I would pick something like the uh, quick selection tool and then you go up to select subject. Click the button and you'll notice it makes the selection for you. I talked more in depth about this tool in another video. I'll link to it at the end of this video. When you zoom in, you'll see that it did a pretty good job. There's a few places that you might need to fix. Just grab the selection brush there and paint over the areas that you want to include. And then you can change it to the minus, the subtraction, and subtract the areas that you don't need. And that's as easy as it is to fix that. But once you have the selection, go to your layers palette and click on the mask button. It will create a mask and leave you with just your subject and knock out all of your background. That's what you want. Now go to file and save this as a layered Photoshop file. I'm gonna save it under the same name. Yeah, I've already created it once, so I've gotta replace it. Once that is saved, you can close that Photoshop file. Go back to Bridge, and you'll see that that Photoshop file is there now. Right click on it and tell it to place in Photoshop. And it will place it in your blank document that you have open. Go ahead and commit those changes. You can hit Command or Control T to transform. And I'm going to scale this up because I really kind of like uh, the image of myself kind of big, bold. It helps to draw attention. So yeah, that's the way that I do that. And then you can actually just hit Return or you can click on the check mark whenever you're finished to commit those changes. You'll also notice with this image, there's kind of a shadow on my face from that camera. It's a little bit dark, so go up to Image Adjustments and shadow highlights. You can play around with that there, but it basically just lifts your shadows, kind of gives you a little bit more of a dynamic range. So yeah, we'll leave it like that. Now click on your bottom background layer, make a new layer, make sure your black color is selected for your foreground color. Once the black is selected for your foreground color, click on the gradient tool. Select that gradient tool, go to the bottom left hand corner, kind of drag it up and to the right, make you a gradient. And we're going to go ahead and rename this to left color. Just do this for your own sake. Make a new layer, choose the gradient tool again, make sure you're still on the gradient tool, and go from the top left down. And yeah, we're going to change this name now to right color. Now I know you're asking, we don't have colors, so what are we gonna do? Let's fix that. We're gonna select the left color, and we're gonna go down here to the adjustment layer, and we are gonna make a solid color adjustment layer. Now I choose a color that kinda of goes with the thumbnail usually. You can play around with the colors, but I'm gonna go with something kind of in this blue color. I'm gonna say okay, and that looks pretty good right there. But now let's click on the right color gradient and we're going to make a new adjustment layer above that we're going to do the same thing select solid color then we're going to choose another color to work with you can go through all of these see which colors that you like 
But for this sake, I'm going to go with something over here on this pink side. We'll go with that. And now it's just a solid color. We need to make that clip to our gradient. So go right between those two layers. And if you hit the Alt button or the Option button, you can see the little arrow click and it creates a clipping mask. Do this to both color layers there for your right and your left color. And there you have two color gradients. The reason we do this is so you can easily click on the color, double click on it, and then you can choose whichever color that you want for a gradient. It makes changing your gradient colors much easier. Click OK, now we have the blue and yellow gradient. But we're not going to stop there. I like to add a little bit of texture. Click on the Pixabay plugin. If you don't have that, I have a video about that. I'll link to it as well. We're going to search for the word texture. We're going to find an image that we can use here. Um, I kind of like uh, this one here. We're going to use this uh, color here. It's, it's kind of a neutral color. Once you download that, you want to right click on the layer and tell it to convert to smart object. Once you convert it to smart object, you can transform it without losing any of the pixels, any of the resolution. So yeah, we just transform that down, so scale it down a little bit there. Then we're going to drag it beneath the layer of me, beneath the subject layer. And that looks pretty good too, but we're going to change the blending options. You can play around with these depending on which gradient that you use, but uh, I, I'm going to look through these, find one I think I like best. I think I'll settle for multiply. It looks pretty good. If it's too strong, just adjust your opacity down just a little bit so we'll leave that there yeah I think that looks pretty good got the ad opacity adjusted so now that looks pretty good as a thumbnail but I'm really not finished there as well I like to add a little bit more to my thumbnails so we're going to click on Pixabay again this time we are going to search for smoke I want a layer of smoke the ones that work best are the ones with a kind of a solid black background or a very dark background. So I'm just going to find one that appeals to me. I like this one here. I'm going to download that. Once it's downloaded, you want to right click and tell it to convert to smart object. Now we're going to drag this down again below our subject layer. And you've got it. Play around with these. Normally screen works the best for this. Now we kind of have a smoke layer that is uh, below our subject layer and on top of our background layer. I'm going to control or command T. I'm going to transform this, move it around something that I like. You'll notice I usually edit with the thumbnail small because I like looking to see how it's going to work for online as it is small. So yeah, I like how that looks there. I think that looks really good. We're making progress with the thumbnail. Now we want to make another layer adjustment we're going to go with a hue saturation. We're going to bump up the saturation a little bit to really make this thumbnail pop and give it quite a bit of color. You want to make sure you're above your background layers for this. Now we're going to choose our top layer, which is our subject layer. We're going to make a brightness and contrast adjustment. So it's going to lighten everything up just a little bit. Give a little bit of brightness there so it looks a little bit better. Yeah, I think that looks really good. Next, all we have to do is put some text over here. So I like using all caps, so I'm just going to type making thumbnails. You'll notice once we get this uh, on here, it's kind of big. It doesn't look too good. Uh, we're going to work on this a little bit. I'm going to transform this down so I can see everything. Once we get this transform, we want it, highlight the top word, making, and I'm going to make this larger so it kind of fits the same width as the word thumbnails. Still not finished with that because it's kind of scrunched up there. I'm going to go over to the character button and adjust the letting and adjust it down to give you some space between them. I'm also going to take off the bold. I really don't like it bold. I think that looks good. Um, you can take this now and transform it a little bit more, put it exactly where you want it. And if you wanted to add something to this, depending on the colors that you choose, go to blending options. You may want to add a stroke, 
choose a different color, maybe something like this yellow possibly that is in the uh, background colors here. And then you can adjust the size of your stroke, make it larger or smaller. And you may even want to go with a drop shadow, add some drop shadow to it. But you may want to think about looking at this small because remember thumbnails are usually small on screen. And when you look at it like that, I really don't think that I need the shadow or maybe change this stroke. Maybe instead of yellow, I'm going to change this to a white stroke. And I think that looks better. And I think that's all I'm going to do to that. I think this looks really good here. I think we've made great progress. So once you have this, go to File, Save As. We're going to keep it as a layered Photoshop file. I'm going to save it into the folder where um, this project is saved. So we are going to save this here as a thumbnail Photoshop file. So. I would highly recommend also changing this to save it as like thumbnail 001. Uh, that way if you want to make a change you have different variations later. Once it's saved go up to layer and go down to flatten the image. It's going to flatten all of your layers together. You can export it as a PNG or whatever you want to. I just save it as a JPEG with that same name. Go ahead and save that. Once you have that saved, you can upload it to YouTube as a custom thumbnail and you are good to go. And that's how I make my thumbnails. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And until next time, God bless.